Pliny Marayama is one of the country's best and most innovative art furniture designers. A professor who just retired from San Diego State, she has exhibited widely since the 1980s, often working in series that allow her to explore interests well beyond woodworking. These include Japan, the Japanese American experience, gender issues, and in her latest body of work, her concern for the rights of animals. The Wildlife Project will be on display at the Center for Art and Wood through April 23, 2016. Wendy told me in an email, I have always loved animals. Even as a child, I wore clothes with animal prints, I drew animals, and I wanted books about them. Five years ago, I kept coming across articles about poaching and the decimation of wildlife, the horrific ways that ivory and rhino horn are procured. These animals have been roaming the earth for millions of years and are on the brink of extinction because of mankind. That is just unacceptable to me. Since these animals are half a world away, it's easy for some to turn a blind eye, but I just couldn't let it go. I went to Africa two years ago to experience these animals in their own environment, and it was just grand the large sky, and to see them loom over you, not only the elephants, but the giraffe, buffalo, antelope, and big cats. Why can't man just leave them alone? As with my series on Japanese American internment during World War II, I wanted to create work that will express my passion about an issue of great moral importance. As a kid, I loved going to natural history museums and recall the interpretive displays that provided additional information. I felt that I wanted to mash the interpretive aspects of these displays with the artwork for a different viewing experience. In addition to the six enormous elephant heads, the exhibition contains three shrine-like pieces, cenotaph, bell shrine, and sarcophagus. In an interview with curator Elizabeth Koslowski, Wendy said the following, a cenotaph is an empty tomb specifically designed to commemorate someone whose remains are elsewhere. It is a form usually used for war monuments. My contention is that there is a war on wildlife, and wildlife is suffering huge losses. The Bell Shrine is an adaptation of a Buddhist shrine used to honor the dead. It is fabricated from Clara Walnut salvaged from a defunct rifle factory. The bell is set to ring every 15 minutes in honor of every elephant that is lost to poaching. While I was working on Executive Order 9066, my series about Japanese American internment, I became friends with several people who were members of the Buddhist temple here in San Diego. Although I am agnostic, I have always been drawn to the rituals of Buddhism and have visited temples in Japan and in the States. The process of honoring or commemorating the dead found its way into my work while I was researching the problems of poaching. It became an internal way for me to deal with the agony of the research and a way for me to honor the life of every animal that dies at the hands of poachers and trophy hunters. As an artist-in-residence at Pilchuck, I was paired with two phenomenal glassblowers, Nancy Callan and Dan Friday, 
who helped me with my tusk forms for sarcophagus. This project would not have been possible without their help. I also took a tutorial with Joanne Teasdale on how to fuse photos onto glass. I am interested in using archival photos and also transparent materials, which allow me to layer multiple images and incorporate video monitors into my work. Wendy is deaf, and that's why we used email rather than a phone call for my questions. She wrote to me, quote, I'm at a bit of a crisis point with too many balls in the air. I'm headed to Nepal right after I go to Philly. Got a bit of a panic attack and had to reassess my calendar and myself. I thought that considering all she has accomplished, that she's being a bit hard on herself. But then I read this in her Koslowski interview. I believe that the most important thing in any field of art is to be prolific. In order to make that one great piece, you have to make nine others before reaching that masterpiece. Some artists, especially woodworkers, proceed so cautiously for fear of making a mistake, they end up taking forever to finish something. However, mistakes made in the process are often the best learning tools, and sometimes those mistakes end up leading to a fantastic idea. Wendy Maruyama has been breaking barriers and expanding her medium for decades, and it seems very obvious to me that she still has a lot of great ideas ahead of her.